Welcome to a review of the Ferminator Fermentation Chamber, kindly provided for us to review by Brewolution.com. Now the Ferminator is a really unique piece of kit, and we've certainly not come across one quite like it. It's made of expanded polystyrene, and it's really densely uh, compacted together there. So in theory that's going to give it some really good thermal properties. So the main parts that are included with the Ferminator are as follows. We have the two main body sections here uh, which connect together. This is currently just sitting on the base there. Um, and each one has a removable panel at the back, although this one has already been removed, in which the temperature control module will push into place and clip into place as well. That then seals in and kind of encompasses your fermentation vessel that you are choosing to use. Now this metal base plate was included uh, for us to review, but I don't think that comes as standard. I think that's a separate um, optional extra. Um, and it's just to basically protect the base of the fermentation, uh, of the fermentator, just in case you know, your fermentation vessel is quite heavy, it might push down into that polystyrene, I guess. And then of course you've got the power leads as well, and an extension one here. On the back of the temperature control unit, which we'll look at in detail in a moment, you've also got a temperature probe to go inside the chamber. Now, we were also uh, given to review the optional extra extension parts, which I'll pan around a bit, you can see just here. And these parts basically will increase the height of the whole chamber so that you can fit in some of those taller fermenters that are available. Now, let's run you through some of the specifications of the Ferminator. The cooling and heating units, at a room temperature of 20 degrees C, this is able to reduce the temperature down to zero degrees C and raise the temperature up to 50 degrees C. And that temperature can be adjusted at any point during the brewing process. So that's really great. That means that you can um, brew some lagers or pilsners or ales or stouts. You can really select the temperature profile that's going to fit um, your particular uh, beer that you happen to be brewing. The unit also has a built-in fan to ensure that the temperature is evenly distributed throughout the Ferminator. There's also a temperature sensor which can be mounted uh, on the inside of the unit itself um, or on the outside should you wish. Power consumption is 75 watts and a standby power consumption of 1 watt. Now the fan speed can also be adjusted, there are three different levels, high, medium and low. The expansion modules that are able to be purchased separately have a height of 22 centimetres. And if you buy a couple of them, you can stack them up to encompass some of the larger uh, fermenters that are out there. So for example, um, if you have the basic model here, which we've got in front of us, um, it's able to fit a 32 litre fermenter, a 30 litre firmzilla flat bottom, or a 29 litre keg menter. With one expansion module, that can then incorporate a 30 litre Firmzilla or rounder, three 19 litre Cornelius kegs, or a 58 litre keg mentor. And then if you went to two expansion modules, you're looking at a 27 litre Firmzilla, 35 litre Firmzilla, 60 litre Firmzilla or rounder, and four 19 litre Cornelius kegs. And finally, if you went as far as buying three expansion modules, then you're looking at um, it being able to fit a 55 litre Fernzilla. If you do decide to buy those expansion modules, there's also the option of purchasing another uh, heating and cooling unit, which can go inside the other panel here, which is able to be pushed out. Just a quick note about the packaging. Um, it arrived in very good condition, but there was a, a slight bit of damage on the inside here, mostly cosmetic. I don't think it's going to affect the performance of the Ferminator, but I think that must have come from the heating and cooling unit, which is actually quite heavy in comparison with the rest of the items. And it's possible the box scraped up and down on the inside there, but apart from that, it did arrive in good condition. Now we're going to assemble the Ferminator. We'll also talk you through the heating and cooling unit there and how to operate that. And we'll also add in the expansion modules so you can see just how much extra capacity you get when you add those in. The control unit itself appears to be really intuitive to use. 
basically you've got two main temperatures on here. Firstly, you've got the set temperature. That's the temperature at which you want the uh, chamber to maintain inside. And then you've got the actual temperature as measured by the temperature probe, which is on, currently on the back of this unit inside the chamber. So to set the temperature to heating and cooling, well, at the moment we've got 18.7 degrees C actual temperature. So we want to increase that. So I'm just gonna press the plus button there and it goes up in increments of 0 0.5 degrees C. So let's set it to 25, say. Oh, slightly higher. Okay, so 25.5. Uh, and currently, clearly it's got another seven degrees um, to get up to that temperature. So it's gonna to have to do some heating for that. So then just press the start stop button. And straight away, you can see a new icon has come up on the screen, these wavy lines, and that indicates that heating is taking place. Now we'll show you the cooling icon in just a moment, but if you want to change the fan speed, there are three options available for you as well. You've got, currently it's on the highest, that's now the medium, and that's now the lowest. Now the fan speed will clearly affect the rate at which the heating or cooling takes place, but the trade-off is uh, volume. So with the, um, the highest fan speed there, you've got a volume of 51 decibels, medium is 47 decibels, and low is 43 decibels. And if you want to cool the unit down on the inside, then we press the minus button, and that's taking us down 0 0.5 degrees C at a time. So let's set that to something like 14. Okay, press the start button again. And this time you notice there's a snowflake icon come up on the screen to indicate that cooling is taking place. And again, you can adjust the fan speed between high, medium and low, which affects the speed at which that happens. And finally, let's add in those expansion modules and uh, see just what a difference that makes to the height and capacity of the Ferminator. And as you can see, we've now got a Firmzilla 30 litre all-rounder fermentation vessel in there. And that, hopefully when we put the lid on, is going to fit really snugly. In summary, we've really enjoyed using the Ferminator from Brewolution.com. It's a really versatile piece of kit, able to be expanded with those expansion modules, as and when you start to gear up your home brewing, perhaps to include slightly larger fermentation vessels. So it does make it a little bit future-proof as well. We like the easy to use control panel there. Very intuitive, very straightforward to get up and running really quickly. We also like the material it's made from, a really interesting choice there um, with some good thermal properties for insulating your home brewing vessel. And the fact it's uh, quite lightweight as well means you're able to move it around easily from place to place too, which is always a bonus. So overall, we highly recommend this. This is the Ferminator from Brewolution.com. Now please hit that subscribe button to PubSheds TV today at youtube.com slash C slash PubSheds to stay up to date with the latest homebrew and home bar related video content. Thanks for joining us.